You are listening to an All Games Radio Network broadcast of AllGames.com. Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. Welcome, geeks, gamers, furries, and ninja robots. This is Horseplay Live. Happy holidays, friends and fam. This is a wonderful day because it's Friday, TGIF, and it's uh, November 24th. Mm hmm. Black Friday has different meanings to different people depending on where you come from. But we survived another Black Friday, another Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, this is episode 206, and uh, we're, we're lazily titling this one another one about Thanksgiving Black Friday. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, I'm your bear, your bald bear lizard host. Am I about to sneeze here? Nope, I'm good. <laughs> and we're continuing our three plus year, over 200 episode celebration. It hasn't been much of a celebration, I've been meaning to do more game nights and giveaways and stuff. It's probably not going to happen until the new year. Um, holidays are expensive, even though we start Christmas shopping early in the year. But it's, uh, when you have a big family, that's kind of the downside. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Um, but uh, I still do need to get that post published. Uh, I was going to cover some Black Friday and Thanksgiving stuff, but since uh, I missed that mark on that, so I was going to at least get a poll up for the hashtag Kelly versus Kelly thing, and kind of just, uh, I think maybe I'll just theme it as a throwback post. Just things that uh, made me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And uh, yeah, so it'll be a nostalgia piece uh, for all the folks out there that uh, love the 80s and uh, part of the 70s, as much as I do. Really, the 70s, the 70s were kind of. 70s were very brown, very beige. All right, that's the best way I could describe it. Um, I know. It's like uh, if you look at the movies and the color schemes, pack packaging. Yeah, there wasn't very many bright colors. It was just kind of a very blah time. Then you look around 50s and 60s, you have pop art, all this like, you know, pe this this art that's just kind of like, bam, in your face, you know, um, it's interesting going back to those old eras, um, I don't pretend to know the 50s, I'm not that old, uh, but you know, you think about, uh, diners and the way they were designed, the color of posters, stuff like that. It's interesting how colors can evoke certain um, feelings, you know. Anywho, if you are not aware, you're new to the show, we do this show live at twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics. Who knows, we might switch to Mixer. I'm starting to get drawn more and more into the Xbox ecosystem. I like how they're doing things. You know, I love PC gaming. I love the amount of stuff you could do in PC, but it's overwhelming. Just looking at my Steam library is like, whoa. And I have a more of a rant on that in a bit. 
yeah, twitch.tv forward slash geeky antics. If you want to join us on Discord, uh, that's uh, geekyantics.net forward slash Discord. People finally realize, oh, Discord, this thing's kind of a good thing to do, huh? I'm entertained with that amount of podcasts are finally moving over to Discord because, you know, there's other methods, but, you know, the main one people use is Skype, and Skype is just a resource hog, you know? It constantly drops people. If people have malware in their computers, they lag, and then everyone else in the call lags. You get the roboting. It's just not ver- not coded very well, which is interesting because the Skype business works a lot better. Uh, it's just the... Uh, you know, I don't know how, how the console app for Skype works, but it's the same back end, so I reckon it's probably just as bad. Who knows? Uh... Anyway, earlier in the day, on Thursdays, and by the way, we do the show at 11 p.m. on Thursdays, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Pacific, 4 a.m. GMT. I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. I'm still recovering from the Thanksgiving food coma and just another long work week. But productive one, productive one. Um, what else, what else, what else? Just a quick plugs at the top of the hour. Uh, you can email us, mail at geekyantis.net. And if you want to leave us a text message or a voicemail, 646-801-2149. Again, 646-801-2149. You'll see the, all that information Ooh, excuse me, on our video if you're on YouTube or Twitch. Just look up Geeky Antics. That's G-E-E-K-Y-A-N-T-I-C-S. All right. So, you know, uh, oh, yeah, one last piece of housekeeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a couple more things. I got it. I can't get past the outro today. I don't know what's with me. Well, the intro, intro, not the outro. We're not even, we're not ending the show. I swear. Uh, Earlier in the day, you catch uh, reruns at 8, 5 p.m. Eastern over at AllGames.com, our unofficial sister network. I like to call it those horse play replay. And the show's primarily a uh, kind of comedy show. It's uh, NSFW. Don't recommend bringing kids along. So proceed at your own risk. Uh, your own risk, friends. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't even know. I don't know what I'm saying. This is why I need a co-host. This is why it's good when we have two or three people, or four even, to keep me in check. But, alright, shaking it off. Shaking off the funk. I'm just extremely tired. I'm like ready for a nap. And I've also been drinking a little bit. That doesn't help. Um, alright, so, let's just jump straight to it. You know, meanwhile, back at the ranch where we talk about uh, IRL stuff. So... Besides work, <laughs> I have been catching up on a lot of TV. Um, it's about the only thing I can fit in and focus on. I'm too exhausted for even video gaming. Gaming, gaming has become kind of work in itself, and not because the games are not enjoyable, but you know, if you, I, I do prim- primarily at multiplayer gaming, and if you don't have your, you bring your A game, you might as well not play at all because you're just feeding people and just doing stupid things like running off cliffs, right? And single player games, well, I have, uh, oh, let's see, I'm, as far as single player games, I'm actually working through Dragon Age Inquisition, Doom, and Dead Rising 4, and I haven't worked with any of those, I haven't worked on any of those lately, oh, Mass Effect Andromeda, which I've barely scraped the surface of, and that's apparently now on the vault, so the copy I have is shrink wrap, guess what, that's going to be a surprise Christmas present, which is awesome, because I have EA Access, and I can give that to my son, and we can play together, so yay, unexpected gift for myself, then that becomes a gift for someone else I love, um, so that works out well, um, so, t- so TV, we have the Flash, we got Arrow, the Gifted, Lethal Weapon, Exorcist, Orville, which I'm still really digging a lot. Uh, Game of Thrones, the final cut that last episode from the previous season. Now we gotta wait two years for the next episode. Doctor Who's gonna come out with the Christmas episode soon. Super stoked about that. Apparently, uh, they're doing another throwback piece where they're bringing back someone that looks like William Hartnell to play the first Doctor. Pretty interesting. It's got mixed reviews, though. We'll, we'll see. Uh, they have like a one minute clip that they release. It's kind of a yearly thing they do for um, a cause. Oh, what's it called? Uh, children in need, I think, something like that. Um, 
So they do a one minute clip and uh, money they raise through advertisers or whatever. I don't know how that works, but yeah, that's a thing. Um, I guess it's bigger overseas than it's here in the States because I, I just I just learned about that myself. I'm a terrible Hoovian. So um, let's go back to Orville. Last episode I have was Firestorm, I believe it was called. Um, there's going to be some spoilers here. So, really dug this episode. Um, ooh, I forgot to mention Gotham. Gotham is one of those shows that I really, really enjoy. But I, I realize I never really get into what makes it so great. So, hopefully I'll do a better job of that. Um, this is why dialogue is important. But Orville, um, so Firestorm was kind of this... And I'm really going to give away the whole thing, but... The whole episode uh, has a theme that revolves around facing your fears. And a security officer, I think her name's Alana, really cute girl. Uh, she's kind of like this Klingon type uh, race. Uh, she's got road bumps on her forehead and uh, pointy ears. Still really cute. Uh, but she's also, because her planet has a really strong gravitational pull compared to all other planets. Um, she has extra strong muscles, as she has super strength essentially. Uh, under normal um, gravity, is pretty neat. Anyways, apparently she had a uh, fear about uh, fear revolves around f fires, and she hesitated, and then someone died, and started getting her. She started second guessing herself, so she put she put herself in a simulation that she had the AI. One of the crew members is uh, like an AI uh, cyborg. Well, not a cyborg. He's a robot, basically. He's like a, probably the most intelligent person in the crew, or at least he thinks he is. Um, he, so he developed, he had her, she had him, rather, develop a, a simulation, you know, a whole virtual holodeck type thing, where all the fears from all the crew members would be compiled, and she had to go through the whole gauntlet and survive. But uh, she, like, invoked... A code 98, I believe, was the condition, which means that no matter what, they cannot pull her out of the simulation. Um, of course, the the code 98 is one of the things you do in a very extreme scenario, because if you make the wrong call, you could lose your job, you could be um, thrown in jail, all kinds of stuff. But if you make the right call, then people say, oh, no worries. That's basically how they explain it. Uh, well, maybe not exactly quite that simple, but that's the gist of it. Um, and it was neat the way they did it because the whole time, and I and I had a feeling because all the stuff that happened was ridiculous. The first thing that ha starts with the simulation, and you, the lines are blurred. You don't know when reality stops and the simulation starts, so you don't notice this going on. The first thing that happens, she gets freaking tackled by a an angry clown with sharp teeth, and then he runs away and disappears. Um... Everyone on the ship sees it, right? So they're like, well, it couldn't even be an, an illusion. And mind you, they just had come out of a strange electrical storm, so they're wondering if it caused some kind of, like, rip in space-time, you know, the fabric of reality been warped, um, you know. And I probably should not have, you know, spilled the beans so soon. Because the reveal at the end is pretty satisfying, you know. Um... Although I kind of started, I started to see it coming because it's just like, wow, all this like fucked up stuff is happening. Like crew members turning against each other and everybody disappears. And then a bunch of spiders come out. And I'm like, this, these all sound like people's like phobias just compiled together. And sure enough, that's what it was. Um, but you know, the way they do it is really, it's really fun. It's a really fun show. Sometimes they're a little heavy handed with getting their point across. You know, especially when they have a, a a theme or a message they're trying to drive home. But uh, in spite of that, you know, it's a fun ride. So I can look past, you know, some of the narrative shortcomings. Um, or more so, better said, uh, the narrative is great. It's just the uh, actual storytelling on how they execute it. That's what sometimes is lacking a little bit. But you love the characters. I feel invested in them. And um. I'm hoping the show sticks. Um, I don't know how Seth MacFarlane could do it alongside, uh, what does he do? He's a family guy and uh, American Dad. Um, I think he's got a lot on his plate, but I'm sure at this point he's just kind of an executive producer to just 
consults here and there, and then goes about his his day. He's probably not as heavily involved as he was in the beginning of those projects, so um, so that should that should help him out. And isn't he? No, I was about to say he was also the guy that did Futurama, but that's Matt Groening uh, of Simpsons fame. Fame. Oof, I cannot speak. Uh, so Game of Thrones, I finally caught that last episode. Very satisfying. It was an hour and ten minutes, roughly. Um, and the, the the big the big thing that stood out for me was Xerxes is just a cunt because they they show proof that monsters exist, and of course the what the folks the folks from the the water folks that's what I call them. Um, from far up north, I guess they are. Uh, they live on the island. Uh, what is the Iron Foraged? Whatever they're called. Uh, Teal's people. Um, oh, God, I forgot what they're called. They're the ones that wear leather and, you know, they do naval combat. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not super, like, versed in uh, Game of Thrones lore. But uh, Xerxes, you know... Just like, well, first of all, they 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 said, all right. I've, the, their leader said, I've seen a lot of it fucked up shit, and this is the I, this this above all of it is like the one thing that I cannot accept, and I am truly scared of. So they just said they just decided to bow and not help out at all to fight these things that are coming to the north. So instead, they just decided, oh well, you know. We'll just uh we'll just wait it out in the islands and hope that the you know winter will go away and they'll and they'll die off, um, and it's just crazy like these folks are so obsessed with conquering that they're gonna wait to the very last minute to to kind of form alliances, you know, let everybody just die off to each other. And Zerzy did the same thing. After she finally like changed her mind, supposedly, and agreed, oh, yeah, I'll help out. She said, no, we're just going to fall back and let them fight these things, and we'll stay in our fortifications. Well, the little do they know that they got a zombie dragon. So, uh, there's not going to be any place to hide unless they go underground. That's the only way I can see people surviving. But they won't even have enough time to build, like, vast underground fortifications, you know? They have they have freaking giants, you know. They got freaking zombie dragons and a massive zombie army that you cut them up into pieces and they still keep coming after you. I mean, you know, they got two dragons left on the good side, but seeing how this guy has freaking perfect quarterbacking skills, can throw a spear or any object perfectly. Just one attempt. Fucking Tom Brady. Fucking cheater piece of shit. Such bullshit. Really pissed me off. Uh, it kind of took me out of it. Like, really? One spear and he hits the dragon? And dragons have pretty tough skin, too. Um, in most lore. And I thought also in Game of Thrones universe. But apparently not. Anywho. We all knew it was coming. A lot of us did. It's still bullshit the way it went down. But I'm still looking forward to the next season, so... Yay, I'm a masochist. <sighs> so Gotham. Gotham's been pretty ridiculous this season. Um, so let's see, where do I even start? Butch, and mind you, this show is interesting because it's not as campy as like the 1960s, you know, Batman series, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, but... You know, it, it has a very dark tone. It, it, it clearly tries to be serious, but then it still has this campy stuff. Like, there's no way that that would have happened. You know, like they exaggerate some things. Like, um, Barbara Gordon's character. Uh, she's gone through all this shit. She came back from the dead because Razagul brought her back, or Razagul, whatever people decide is the proper way of saying it. They change it even on on the on this different Batman content, so whatever. Um He brings her back to life so he can carry out his plan. Um which is basically to infuriate baby Batman 
well not teenager Batman to the point where he kills him so he can become his heir and apparently Raja Ghoul has lived so long this Raja Ghoul at least uh, has lived for so long that he just wanted the pain to stop so in this universe this is a very different Raja Ghoul than the one we know in our universe clearly they're not connected because they're different uh, networks I'm wondering if there is any continuity with another Raja Ghoul, another person take over, become Raja Ghoul. And is that like a title, basically? Because um, in the Arrow universe, the Raja Ghoul that Arrow fights acted like he's lived a long time too. Um, and he was kind of raising an heir as well. Like That's the whole reason he kind of threw down with Oliver, Queen. Um, anyway. We're going to just say there are different universes because they're different networks, right? One's a Fox, one's a CW. Um, and apparently there's no continuity between different Warner Brother properties. Uh, much like Marvel, because, or at least in the movie universe, because, you know, Fox owns this stuff, Sony owns that stuff, and it's a big mess. But anyway. And they basically trade properties like, you know, baseball cards, you know? It's kind of funny. Or like a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Hey, you got a, you got a, the Forbidden's leg. If you give me that, I'll give you a Witch of the Black Forest and a Sangan. Okay, cool. You know, but instead they'll do stuff like, hey, uh, we'll give you Super Hyper Mega Nuke Girl, or whatever her name is, who's been only featured in one comic ever in Marvel U Universe, and you'll give us. The Living Planet, Ego. Okay, cool. Good stuff. <laughs> Ego from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which what a great movie. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I hope they keep those going. Um, I, don't, I don't see myself getting bored of that universe. It's space, and it's got attitude, and a lot of, like, you know, throwback love with all the music and stuff. You know, it's got a cassette player. Ah, oh, takes me back to my youth. Um, so yeah, Gotham. Let's go back to Gotham. Okay, I went off on a super tangent there. Uh, what else happened? Uh, so Barbara's kind of like this badass girl. You know, she was kind of unwieldy, unpredictable. Um, Raja Gua, she kind of reined her in. Then he died, and she kind of lost her purpose. And now she's kind of teamed up. With people that were her enemies before, because she pissed them off by shooting Butch in the forehead and doing other fucked up shit. But now, like they have like the little girl group. It's a uh, Catwoman, you know, young young Catwoman. Um, so what is her name? Cecilia Kyle. Um, Barbara Gordon and guess what is the girls? The girl with the whip. She's that one dude's uh, sister. She's pretty badass, but not bad in, badass enough where I feel like she's going to stick around. Or I should know her name. Oh, that's terrible. That's terrible. But I do like them together. They, they kick some ass. Um, but we're going on also, she, she's kind of, I don't know, it's funny. She has this shield of just confidence. Because she'll walk around and expose herself completely. Doesn't get shot. And then she, like, manages to get off three shots and kill three people before, you know, anyone else could react. She's just magical like that. She just kind of walks around in heels and well-dressed. It can't be comfortable. You now, why, why do you have these these organized crime types that dress in the, in business attire? That's, like, probably the, the last thing I would choose. Oh, well, got, we got to look snazzy. While we're we're committing crimes, no, it's not very functional. You put on some like rock climbing shoes and some sweatpants, you know, bulletproof vest. I don't know, some tactical gear, something. Not a freaking business suit. <laughs> uh, cracks me up. Anyway, fast forward to today in got in the Gotham universe and. A lot has happened, but mainly, uh, well, yeah, that's, a, that's another big piece that I should talk about is uh, um, Don Falcone's daughter is now in Gotham, 
she kind of has a thing with Jim Gordon. And then uh, Jim's like, no, I can't. You know, he's having second thoughts about it because he's realizing that she's just as ruthless as all the other criminals he's trying to stop. But, you know, he asked for her help to help clean up Gotham. So she's going up against the Penguin. But she's trying to trick the Penguin to thinking that she's his friend. And she's got all these things going on. She opens up an orphanage. It's kind of set up a smoke screen. It's like, no, I'm not doing I'm not doing anything harmless. At first, you know, the penguin was like, oh, she's building a fortress behind my back. I knew it. She's betraying me. It's like, nope, it's an orphanage. And now she's got uh he's got a spy and this little kid who's a mute. Um cute kid. He's got a little notepad and he writes stuff on it. And he's and penguin's kind of molding him in his way. I wonder if that kid's gonna be an important character, if he's gonna grow up to be an evil villain. Um, he gets picked on a lot, and the penguin is just warping his thoughts. Like you know, let me show you how to get back on peop at people the right way. You know, um, and he's like showing show him the importance of being deceptive. Like no, you don't do things that people could trace back to you. Like lighting the book bags on fire, they, they know that would, that would they would know that's you. But what you do is you turn them against each other. You know, ha divide and conquer. Um, penguin's pretty great. He's He's great at manipulating people, you know, he's a weasel, he doesn't, he, you know, he's defenseless, but he, he just knows how to take advantage of people, and, uh, you know, he's he's brilliant that way, he's built a more massive empire than even Don Falcone had at his at the peak of his uh, reign, or at least that's what they make it seem like, but you can also see that he's losing his grip because he's trying to bite off more than he could really chew. So anyway, uh you know, uh Penguin's got the uh, politician in his hands. He's got this thing going called the uh, Pax Penguina Penguino, something like that. Where's the, the the penguin piece, roughly. So you know, and the whole way he does it is and if you're gonna do crime in Gotham you have to have a license. So all crimes have to go all organized crimes have to go through him and there's more structure to it. And he's also, you know, Benefiting from all the crime that happened, and if people don't comply, he he takes care of them, and you know, makes an example of them. So then that helps the Gotham City uh, Police Department with their with their job, um, and it's pretty brilliant, you know, taxing uh, a, a crime tax to kind of curb how many people uh, do crimes. So he takes a, a a hefty amount off the top to the point where cri criminals will say, well, you know, what's the point? We're basically not bringing anything home and we're taking all the risk and then paying him for doing nothing for allowing us to do our work work in air quotes <laughs> um what else happened uh a lot of stuff goes down um this uh this one villain who i guess would be considered a social justice warrior is the best fitting, the most fitting thing for him. Um, Professor Pig, uh, very theatrical type of of character. You know, he, he kind of speaks with a Shakespearean style. You know, and I don't know if I could do his voice. Oh yeah, this is how I talk. Ooh. You know, it's kind of something silly like that. Um, He's he's the kind of villain that like does a lot of little twirls and has all the flair, you know. Um very very exaggerated character, but but a fun character. Um they haven't revealed this yet, but I have a feeling that she's one of the, that he's one of the things that um Miss Miss Falcone put into uh into play. And she uh, sold it by having uh, Professor Pig uh, stab her in the hand when he uh, kept a bunch of uh, of uh, Gotham's elite um, captive and forced them to eat human meat pies. <laughs> and that was the episode, uh, I think it was called They Will Eat Pie. Um, he finally gets caught, though, but not before he tricks... Um, uh, what's his face? Belichick? No, not Belichick. That's the coach. Uh, fuck. What's his name? Uh, Jim Gordon's partner, who's now the captain. 
Oh my lord, I just had it in the tip of my tongue. Harvey, Harvey, not Harvey Dent. Harvey Bellick? Yeah, let's see Bellick. Anywho, um, Bell uh, Harvey uh, shoots uh, a fellow cop. He survives, but uh, hurts him. I think he put ends up having that cop go in the wheelchair because uh, the, the Professor Pig had him dressed up as himself. So I always find it funny. You hear someone going flailing their arms, they're, they're, they're mumbling, and the first thing you do is shoot. All they're holding is a meat cleaver. You know, it's kind of silly. And there was no no one nearby. Like, what was he going to do? Throw the meat cleaver at you? So he was a little hasty. And uh, I think Ms. Falcone leveraged that. Paid off the mayor, who was previously in the penguin's pocket. Hit him so the penguin couldn't trace it back to her. You know, or and torture him to get, you know, quest to question him. Um... And uh, a port now uh, she got, before the mayor left, uh, she had the mayor uh, appoint Jim as the captain. Uh, so now he's the captain, and uh, Harvey feels bet betrayed. But, I mean, he kind of did it to himself. Uh, I don't know. Jim's uh, trying to clean up things, and Harvey feels like, Street justice is justifiable, you know. If it if it uh, you know, uh, if it cleans things up, you know, you know, do uh, do a little bad to do more good in the end. And Jim feels like no, you just do good, and you don't break the, you don't bend the rules to suit you. You know, a lot of the cops, including Harvey, were getting kickbacks from Penguin, um, and very interesting stuff. So, I think that's that's really where we're at now. Oh yeah, the Riddler, uh, who was previously last season, he was uh, frozen to a block of ice and made it to uh, the core in the Penguin's new bar, which was previously previously uh, Barbara Gordon's uh, uh, bar before she died and was resurrected. Um, I forgot who killed her actually. Um. And now somehow the Riddler being on ice that long, he's like, it's caused some brain damage. So he's actually kind of dumb and he can't come up with a good riddle. <laughs> and he had a huge fan in this girl that uh, thought he was brilliant and he like knocked her out and then Penguin found her and killed her. Like, dude, you know that? She's a good looking woman. Should have like uh, kept her handy, you know, and be nice to her because she freed you. So... Um, that was weird. Uh, this, uh, driven by emotion, you know? Uh, just like the Penguin. Uh, the Riddler and Penguin's characters are pretty similar. Um, they're both masterminds, different ways they execute things. Um, Pink, the Riddler's plans, obviously, are more elaborate. Penguin is just good at exploiting people's, uh, weaknesses, you know, human weakness. He's good at that. Um, but now the Riddler's kind of just herp -a derp but uh, you know, at some point uh, early on in this in this season, um, they dump Butch, who's in a coma, with a bullet in his head. I guess it didn't penetrate all the way; it was in a high caliber. But he's in a coma, not dead. Um, and they threw him in this this swamp called Slaughter Swamp, a little on the nose there, which uh, lo and behold is a toxic waste dump where. Indian Hill used to throw all their chemicals in. So, you know, it didn't take much to figure out, oh, he's going to evolve into some creature. And now he's Solomon Grundy because that's the song he heard, you know, on a record playing with some hobos that were hanging out. And uh, it started, you know, it was skipping and it kept saying, he was born on a Monday, Solomon Grundy. His name was Solomon Grundy. His name was Solomon Grundy. His name was Solomon Grundy. And he's like, oh, I'm Solomon Grundy. So he goes around, you know. He's he's pretty fun because he goes around asking people, like, you know Grundy? <laughs> and it's just, it's just that, I don't see that getting older anytime soon. So anyway, he bumps into the Riddler. And that's just, that, that, that's saving the Riddler. That's going to keep him relevant because he's got this virtually indestructible, super strong... 
uh, minion who thinks that he's his friend, even though they didn't get along previously. Um, but uh, Grundy doesn't know that. Butch does, but not Solomon Grundy. Um, and there's a bunch of other stuff that goes on with the Narrows. Um, Dr. Sexy is there, and she's uh, trying to keep doing her doctor thing to so she could... You know, she's patching up all these fighters that are uh, fighting in an uh, illegal fight club in the Narrows. And um, where also Solomon Grundy's at. And uh, so she can raise enough money to open up her own clinic. But she's got, like, this whole badass thing going on. You can tell, like, she doesn't care anymore about love. Because she's been burned. But she still cares about people. But she has, like, this whole demeanor of, like, I don't give, give a shit about anything. But, you know, she still does. Um... This it's this it's a great show. There's a lot of different things going on there, and um, I think what's great about it is you have this ensemble cast. It started off as kind of being the Jim Gordon Variety Hour, and him rising through the ranks, you know, from becoming a you know a young flatfoot to actually becoming a competent cop. And he's pretty badass, you know. Like he just cut, gets himself out of all the all kinds of crazy situations. You're like, man, this guy's unstoppable. Uh, it helps you appreciate his character a lot more. But now, um, the 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 story revolves around a lot, the other characters a lot more. In fact, to the point where you barely see young Bruce Wayne as much anymore. And uh, Bruce Wayne is kind of annoying right now because. You know, uh, the whole thing went down, uh, Alfred told him, hey, you know, killing is that, once you kill someone, that's a point you can't come back from, you never get, truly get past that, but he still killed, uh, Raja Ghoul, and, you know, in a moment of rage, and now that, now he's in this dark place, and he's just basically emo teen, drinking, he bought a, a club, a nightclub on, on on a whim so he can impress his teen friends, you know, um, high, his high, his young high society teen friends that all uh, come from rich families and uh, you know he's just a rowdy teenager. I'm like, yeah, okay, let's move on. So they're not lingering that too much, but you get enough of that here and there. Where you're like, all right, let's move on to the rest of the story. And when you get out of the funk, then we'll come back to you. So something's got something has to go down. Obviously, we know that that darkness follows Batman for the rest of his life, but he eventually establishes his code, right, and kind of finds his center. Um, so I'm wondering how soon we'll see that in the young Batman <clears throat> who was uh, doing his Batman stuff uh, already. Training with Alfred, and um, just becoming all around badass. Picked up some pretty killer moves. And try to, oh, and of course he gets some gadgets that he got from uh, Lucius Fox. <clears throat> I'd like to see more of Lucius Fox uh, involved, um, but he's kind of become a lesser character, which is kind of a shame. Um, so he says less about Batman and more about. Jim Gordon and his adventures, uh, but I'm, we're seeing a lot more of Catwoman or Catgirl, depending on how you look at it, on these other like kind of supporting characters, which is really cool. So Gotham, I really, 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 really recommend it. Um, you know, a lot of people can take it seriously. Like, it's a Batman show without Batman, and yeah, that's kind of true. But seeing these the origin stories for all these characters. That we know as centerpieces in the Batman universe is really cool. Um, seeing Batman ra rise through all these uh, events that shape the Batman that we know and love is, is really neat. Um, we saw that in the Chris Nolan movies, right? But uh, seeing the, the the stuff that happens even before that is really is really really cool. Um, so definitely recommend that. Uh, speaking of the kind of DC Warner Brother properties, um, Arrow. Not so much to say here. This season has basically become 
one of those annoying th stories where you know you have a uh, enforcer who's hell bent on it's got a hard on for catching a criminal that's not really a criminal you know kind of reminds me of ghostbusters I, I always got pissed off by that one environmental guy whatever whatever his agency was to try to shut down the ghostbusters because he said they were like you know running siphoning power and they were like scam artists and blah 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 and then he freed all the ghosts you know and even after he saw the proof he's like no that's just laser effects and blah 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 um so now we got an fbi agent on the arrow that's just hell-bent to you know expose oliver queen as the arrow he has stopped being the arrow so he could be the first son because he had a conversation with deathstroke who's now a good guy and is not He's not uh, influenced by the Mirakura anymore, so he's actually thinking straight. Um, I, I like good guy Deathstroke a lot. Um, and Deathstroke has his own problems with his own son, so he gives, uh, he gives uh, Oliver some advice. Like, look, you know, you're walking both paths now, but eventually you have to choose one. And Oliver Queen's like, oh, what does that mean? He's like, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> he says, there's you, Oliver Queen, and there's the arrow it can't be both because eventually one one has to give and I, I just found it funny that he needed explanation on that and so, sometimes dialogue is just like really uh, you, you're explaining this because do, do you think the, the audience is that dumb that they didn't catch that and it's at least some stuff to the imagination i don't know i don't think it was that huge of a point nor was it that cryptic where you had to explain what he meant by that but whatever um <sighs> what's he gonna say yeah, this, this is kind of fake maybe face palm all over again uh, yeah that, that was still fun um i like dana what's her name, last name dana is it dana lance no she has a different last name in that part of the lance family but basically, she's the siren, not the not the black siren. She's the uh, the canary. I forget what they call her. No, the canary was a uh, freaking Sarah Lance. Oh God, I don't know. It's all confusing. Because depending on what you watch, like if you watch the old Bird Birds of Prey show, they have a whole different um, timeline. You know, and these. Both Marvel and DC have rebooted the universe so much that I don't even know anymore who's who. Um, Dick Grayson and Dick 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 Van Dyke. I don't know. They're all the same now. Who, who cares? Um, so yeah, but now the last thing, I, the last episode I saw, uh, Oliver gets uh, arrested. Mind you, he's mayor, and he hasn't been at the Arrow for a while, but. Uh, you know, I, you know, I kind of like it. Finally, they they expose something that always bothers me about shows and movies. Like, how do you not notice that that masked guy is this guy? You can still see their chin, their jawline, the a hood, and a little like eye p eye mask doesn't really do a good job of disguising you, especially if you're different, uh, you know, skin colors. Oh, and you know, so she goes, oh well, very clear. It's very obvious that. The arrow that we're seeing now is just John Diggle trying to cover for you, you know. Because before when the when the arrow was exposed, they said, "Oh, it's Roy Larson," and then he he disappeared. So now, uh, you know, that, that supposedly exonerated him or whatever. Um, so you know, I, I don't know. You thought I thought there was a thing about double jeopardy. If you if you're cleared of charges, you can't be retried for the same crime, can you? I thought that's how it works. I don't know. But anyway, anyway she's hell bent on uh, exposing me. And she did a really dirty thing. Like, you know, here's Oliver Queen as the mayor, Mayor Queen, doing a food drive and give, you know, doing Thanksgiving dinner, giving, you know, homeless people and, and poor people, you know, some food and handing it out himself along with the help of his staff. You know, do something really good. And then opening up a brand new, you know, um, uh, Star City um, Police Department, right? 
because uh, he he wants people to know, look, you, you can't rely on the cops, but you know at the same time, the vigilantes that are doing good and and are playing by a code, they do play by the rules. They're not they're not above the law. But they're working alongside the law, right? And he set this whole thing in motion where he wants the people to vote on whether they think the vigilantes are a problem and whether they should be wasting police resources to chase down vigilantes when there's real, tons of criminals going around. Anyway, so she, she comes there and arrests him right in front of his son, William, all right? And, and, and on live television, all this shit, I'm like, wow, this, this, this chick is a freaking, freaking bitch. What a piece of shit, you know? But she plays her role well because I really do not like her. You know, she's got the whole stereotypical, hi, I'm a black woman with a chip on my shoulder. And because I'm black and a woman, I'm doubly upset and, and angry and have more to prove. <laughs> I know that's going to offend some people, but, you know, this is, listen, as a minority person, I feel like sometimes folks um, put on, the, they, they start an agenda and as they, they they don't realize like you know by pushing really hard on certain things you're actually becoming the very shit that you hate. Um, but anyway, her character does what it's supposed to, and uh, she's got Oliver now. And I'm like, how's he gonna get out of this one? You know, is she gonna end up getting killed by accident? Then the case, the FBI case, will be dropped. Uh, or does it bring more heat on him? I don't know. Um, but that's the arrow. The Flash, on the other hand, way better show, um, and this season is no exception. Uh, this is one of those uh, scenarios where he's fighting a super mastermind type of criminal, which is the hardest kind of villain to fight because it's something where you don't know where the threat will come from. But, you know, um, I guess we kind of seen this all over. His arrow last season was like that. The but the, then again, there was physical fighting involved as well. But this guy was completely destroying him, not just physically, but also getting pe people to you know he, he got people to question his credibility, you know, and and started like causing things to happen in his life. It was influencing everything, every aspect of of who Oliver Queen is as the arrow and as him, as himself. So now, in the Flash, is kind of a similar thing going on. Uh, we finally get to see who DeVoe is. And in the very last episode they just had, uh, we we get a background into how he became who he is. But I still don't get a sense of what is his driving force. Why is he... Why does he got a bone to pick with Oliver Queen? I'm mean, not Oliver Queen, with, with the Flash. That's the part I don't get. Like... Is it because he's trying to put Metas away, or because he's just he just sees him as a future threat? So I'm guessing you know this is a guy that 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 treats life now as a, a chess game, and he sees several moves ahead. So maybe you know it's not what the Flash has done so far, but what he will do in the future. Um. And I'm guessing what I'm thinking is going on is that I'm thinking that the trade-off for for expanding his mind to virtually limitless, you know, infinite bounds has no boundaries. In effect, he's damaged his body in other ways, right? Because he's in a wheelchair now. So maybe there's something he needs from the Flash. In order to escape his inevitable peril, which it looks like he's gonna die of, you know, se semi natural causes. Good, well, you know, it's not natural because he actually modified himself in order to become this smart. So he's got technology from his wife who designed, who um, built the, th the device he designed to expand the limits of, of the human brain. Um, so his brain works faster and it has more storage capacity than any human brain. But, and from what it seems like it's, 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 it's infinite, you know, like, or at least the, the sum of s several masterminds, like he's even smarter than Harrison Wells now. 
um, which Harrison Well, I think is more hot air than anything else. I mean, he's not clearly br brilliant, but there's a lot of times where Cisco has to come in there and, you know, give him some fresh perspective. I guess that's, that's kind of the pearl of being really smart is that sometimes you get tunnel vision and you, you can't, you know, approach a situation from another angle and your pride gets in the way. You know, you can't, you get in the way of yourself, right? Um, but, uh, so I'm guessing he needs, um, he needs Barry to get his speed force and maybe the speed force will, maybe that's what he wants is his speed force so he could have regenerative powers in addition to what he has. Um, but then, you know, it just makes you wonder why all the theatrics of it all. He, uh, coordinated the events that would have Barry come back out of the Speed Force at a specific location where a bus would stop so that the, the entry would cause a, a, a event horizon type of event, whatever you call it, so that they the people there would become metas, so that they would cause chaos. So I, I'm guessing those folks are just a smokescreen while he gets other things in order. But it doesn't seem like he's doing anything, or maybe they're doing it like on purpose. Um, but I'm, that's what I'm thinking. He's trying to distract the team while he gets his things going. But if that's the case, you know, why just why not just stay quiet, stay underground, so that you know no one will come after you? And he finally exposed himself. So they, you know, after making. In one episode, Barry meets him and says, oh, this can't be our guy. You know, everybody's like, oh, this can't be our guy. He's just a mild-minded professor who's in a wheelchair. He's got a sweet wife who makes really good three-cheese mac and cheese. Um, and, you know, there's nothing. He's got no criminal background, not even a ticket. Um, you know, no, no priors, right? And he's a really friendly guy. He invited us back to dinner. This can't be our guy. Well, you, you know, not the first time they've had someone uh, put up a ruse like that, right? And we saw that in season one, Jesus, you know? So, Barry stuck to his guns. And instead of writing out this whole thing where everybody just started thinking, oh, Barry, drop it. You're like, you're harassing this guy. They got a restraining order on him. You know, and the person's like, oh, you're abusing me. This is harassment. You know, I already told you everything I know. Um, instead of writing that out at the end of the episode, he's like, yeah, yeah, Barry, I am the DeVoe you're looking for. And you know what? You can't stop me because I'm super smart. So there, yeah. I mean, man, they like, they did not like hold their cards at all. They just went straight for it. So just like a complete 180 and the same episode. So I, you know, while I love this show, and it's a leap, leaps and bounds ahead of Arrow, this episode had me scratching my head. It's like, well, what was the point of having that ruse just to tease Barry a bit? Uh, I don't know. Because now everybody's like, oh, I'm sorry, Barry. We should have we should have trusted you. So there's no damage in, in all that effort to make Barry look like an asshole. I don't know. But that restraining order is still in effect, so he could effectively, you know, have Barry arrested, you know, while he executes a plan. And Barry being kind of a straight-edge guy, he's not going to try to escape jail. He'll just stay jailed. And then he doesn't want to risk, you know, re revealing who he is either. So, and I'm just kind of thinking, like, what, what could this, what's all this set up for? I don't know. You know what? What? What is the, the end game here for the role? And we're pretty deep into the season, so we probably have I don't know. We probably have the last episode before Christmas, and then it goes. The show will go on break. So what is that? Really, like twenty two, twenty four episode seasons. So I have like twelve episodes now, and another twelve come like. The spring return, you know, kind of March, April ish. 
and then it goes back on break and it comes back fall around September. So I don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of things they're gonna have to wrap up. Or well, might not even see a resolution to season. I don't know. I don't know if they can even. Then on the flip side, I'm like, I don't know if they can keep this going, because like just in one episode, they just completely flipped around the situation. I thought they were kind of dragging it out, and just say, just play this whole angle of, you know, this guy is so brilliant. He's just gonna torment Barry until every, he loses everybody he loves, and no one trusts him anymore. And while he's trying to regain everyone's trust, he's doing whatever he's doing. But no. That's not the case, so, huh. Very interesting. And though I suppose he still could, because it's still Barry's word against his. So, I'm really curious to see how this will play out. Not much about a bunch of other shows. Uh, Lethal Weapon, Fun, Rob. Every, every episode of that show is like a summer blockbuster in a small package and it's great you know, Damon Wayans with uh, homeboy that plays uh, uh, Riggs <clears throat> they're a good combo I like the their captain too or the lieutenant whoever he is he has their captain right he has their captain um, um, Damon Wayans on screen wife is, is fantastic keeps him in check like most good women do uh and uh, it's a great balance because you have the home life stuff where you see what the challenges of modern parenting. And then you see the contrast with Riggs where he doesn't have that family. Something he has a void there. Um, and he's just a hot mess. And you really feel for him. Um, but really it's just the, the, the action and the hijinks keep everything going. Um, I don't think they have any real plan to resolve these issues anytime soon. <laughs> they might. They might. Um, or Riggs will just keep being this broken person. I mean, there seems, there seems to be some progress. You know, you got the attractive Latina. Oh, I forget her name. She's way too skinny, though. That girl needs some meat in her bones. She was on, she used to be on the Fast and the Furious movies. I forget the actress's name. I guess it's irrelevant right now, but uh, she plays the department uh, shrink. And I think she's finally breaking through to him. Um, I still feel like there's going to be something between them. But really, I hope I hope he resolves what he had with uh, Agent Palmer. They were a great couple. And like, soon after freaking... Then Wayne's wife goes, you know, talks to her and says, hey, you know, give Riggs a chance, stick with it. Because, you know, if you give him a chance, you might be surprised. But I guess she took that the wrong way. Uh, and it was, it was, she just saw, saw it as a sign, oh, maybe I should push for something more. And then when he didn't reciprocate, she was like, all right, well, I got to go back to work. So I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. And she pretended that she left, but she hadn't left yet. And Riggs is in the car watching her catch a taxi instead of stopping her and say, look, let's talk. Or just grabbing her and kissing her passionately. And like, I know it's a, it's a cliche too, but something. Jesus, he's just let her walk away. I guess maybe because he realizes he needs to work on himself, but damn. At least like tell her, hey, you know, I really care about you. It's just I'm in a place right now where I don't know what I want. And I'm not right. And I don't want to drag you into that. But when I get my shit straight, you know, if you're still available, I hope we could pick up where we left off or really give this thing a shot. Um, I just don't want to, you know, bring you into my my mess. You know, and, and if she's really the right one, she'll be like, nah, dog, I'm there for you through the thick and thin, yo. Or, she'll say, or if she's not that, you know, that's a lot to ask of someone. People do not like baggage. <laughs> but everyone has it, which is hilarious. Like, oh, I want someone who doesn't have a bag. Well, you know what? You have baggage too, so eat it. But uh, at the least, the, the worst she could have done is say, oh, well, you know, yeah, maybe we should put a break on uh, a positive thing. But at least they come to an accord there, and it's not just this, this what if kind of thing going on. 
where they don't really confront the what's going on. They just kind of brush everything off, right? Because they're both tough people. And they don't discuss their feelings. But she's clearly feeling those things. Um, and I get it. You know, their relationship at first was fun for Riggs because it was... There was no strings, and they had a good time together. They're both in law enforcement, so they have that common ground. And they're both really busy, so, you know, there wasn't... Initially, they didn't expect it to be much opportunity for something more to grow. But then it, it, it started evolving, and I guess that scared him. And she wanted more, and he wasn't ready to give it. So, so it's a tale as old as time, right? So, Lethal Weapon, fantastic. Um... The Gifted, the Marvel show on the Fox, <clears throat> this takes place um, after the X-Men disappear, which I don't remember how that went down in the comics, to be honest, um, but it, it makes me curious to go back to that, and I'm wondering what continuity this factors into. It is a darker Marvel continuity, which I think the one is writing now, where um, a lot of the X-Men get killed. Or they get imprisoned by the Sentinel services. So this show is t takes place there at that point. Um, probably after the, what they call the Westchester incident. Where, um, I believe that's where um, Professor Xavier um, starts to suffer heavily from dementia. Or Alzheimer's, something to that effect. Um, and his psychic powers spiral out of control. And he basically causes all the mutants to go crazy as well because he's just controlling them. Um, and then um, that's where, you know, the last Wolverine movie takes place. Where Wolverine, uh, you know, is keeping him hidden so he doesn't hurt anyone. Um, it's a very dark X-Men universe, but I guess it's always been pretty dark, right? Because... That by by nature they're a dysfunctional team, though they have a, a noble intent. You know, there's all kinds of personal conflict. You know, Scott Summers is with Jean Grey, but Wolverine loves her. Um, unrequited love there, right? That's frustrating. Um, you know, the, the teamwork is is kind of lacking. Then again, I think, I, you can't, there's not very many superhero te teams, especially the way the stories are told now, where they're on point with their with their teamwork. There's always someone that, you know, acts up and doesn't follow the plan, or you have too many chiefs and not enough Indians, you know, that, all that kind of stuff seems to always go on, right? Um, but The Gifted is, it, it's really, I like the direction it's going in. It is a bit of a slow burn. And it's kind of frustrating because I'm like, ah. Oh. And the, the the guy who heads up the Sentinel services, great actor. When he plays an asshole, I especially can't ha can't stand him because he he's got the, a pretty face and it's a punchable face at the same time. So it's like, I I just want him to go down. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, man. Fuck you. <laughs> and he's one of these guys like, you know, you know, you know he's got a personal vendetta. Kind of like the FBI agent has for Arrow, uh, Oliver Queen. Um, she's, he's got a personal vendetta because a mutant inadvertently killed his child and his wife. Or no, it's just his child. Right? So now all mutants are bad. But it could have just as easily been a construction worker that wasn't controlling a crane properly and dropped a, a pile of bricks. He's, he's giving, you know... Attack construction workers now, you know, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, always kind of angers me. It's like one one experience, and now it's like you're gonna generalize. Um, but anyway, you know, you said they have to have a bit of a stretch like that in order to keep the the story going along. Um, so they have the mutant underground. All the mutants have gone underground. They got like this whole underground underground railroad type thing going on. Um, and basically most of them are going south of the border because the uh, United States is no longer safe from mutants. Uh, they're trying to round up all the mutants and cross over um, while keeping a framework in the States. But this this guy's gone so crazy because he keep getting away 
that he's um, he's tasked a company called Trask Traska uh, Industries, I believe, who he's tasked them with um, recruiting assets to help him catch the mutants and their mutants that have been um, drug induced, brainwashed. Uh, so that that that's interesting. So that they're, they're trying to plant. This is this is the one thing I want to say before we, I move on to the the last show that I want to discuss. Um, so the the whole plan is to have these these assets inserted into the mutant underground by putting them in these refugee camp, known refugee camps, or with known sympathizers. So they'll be taken back to the underground and then um, help them locate where these underground facilities are. Right. Um, they're not actually on the ground, but you know what I mean. They're, the hidden facilities are. So they have tracking devices built in, right? Um, and they're like sleeper agents. So here's the thing. You want to do something like this is incognito, but all the assets have a tattoo on them that looks like the Sentinel robot helmet with like little rays coming out of it. Uh, that's not very stealthy. This tattoo that identifies all your assets, so you know which one. So, like, the, couldn't they just have, you know, some other way for them to identify assets versus, you know, independent mutants, like scanning a chip, maybe? I don't know. They already have them embedded with GPS. Why not just make it, you know, RFID or something? It's just stuff like that. It's like, ah, facepalm. Like, you did not think this all the way through. But it does allow the mutant underground to intercept the first attempt for their main facility in Georgia to be ambushed, and they're able to remove the tracking device and uh, take the the asset safely back to their base and question her before she dies from uh, drug with withdrawal. Uh, kind of sad. But uh, thinking the show, and it, it just I love the X Men universe, and God, it really makes me want to get back into comic collection or, or doing something like uh, Marvel Unlimited. But Jesus, I do not have time for that. I don't want to open up that can of worms because oh my God, I, I could just see myself binge reading all these comics, and there's so much stuff to catch up on. Practically uh, over two decades worth of stuff like. That's the last time I've really, really, yeah, really, really, that's the last time I've really, really collected comics. The last show I mentioned earlier, The Exorcist, wow, I've been talking about, about TV shows for an hour. Um, Exorcist, and, you know, not too much to say. Um, I, I really dig it, though, because at first I didn't think they could successfully make a show based on the movie and have it have memorable memorable moments but they they did it they do it every episode uh this is you know everything all the horror tropes that you'd come to expect you know things floating around lights flickering creepy children um just this impending sense of doom it's all there um and and this season what they're doing. Um, last season, it kind of started going in the direction of oh, there's this darkness that's coming in. Um, and it started hinting at corruption inside the church. Earlier in the season, they revealed that there was some demons that were integrated, not just possessing, but integrated with their hosts. Um, and, and, and people in the church were actually opting in to have themselves possessed and integrated with these demons. So it's like a huge invasion of demons going on right now. And um, it's pretty interesting. And a brunt of this season has taken place in an orphanage. And the story there is uh, pretty tragic because in that island, um, there was a, a, a farmer, if I'm not mistaken, who slaughtered his whole family. And then went to where his daughter was sleeping and killed all her friends. But the daughter survived. And she 
uh, grew to be very old and his sister remembered that. And, she's, and you know, they, the exorcist interview her and they say, you know, describe your dad. He's like, oh, he was a kind man. He always took care of us, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, I remember he used to always do this and that, you know. And that, that, that night that he did that stuff, that wasn't him. And I was like, wow, that's, you just imagine, like, what would it take to get someone to do something so gruesome, right? Um, so, you know, that happened many years ago in this timeline. And I, right off the bat, I said, you know, this is connected to what's going on right now in this orphanage. Sure enough, it is. And I think it's the same exact demon. They haven't formally said that, but it's pretty obvious. You know, like all these demons have a different kind of tendency for certain things. And some like to kill children. Some like to do emotional torment. There's certain thing to get off on, right? But they all work prey on, on the, your weaknesses and uh, play mind games. Um, so for, in this particular case, they they have the the person that runs the orphanage. Um, they're pretending the demon is pretending to be his wife who drowned herself out of nowhere one day, um, and they wrote that off to the depression. But it turns out there was a demon working at her. I think she killed herself because she didn't want the demon to win. Um, she did it as an act of love for her family. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a heavy show. I definitely recommend you checking it out, though. And, you know, I forgot to mention Lucifer. But since I've been talking so much about TV, I was going to say Lucifer, fucking awesome. And there's some other shows I've been watching. Um, like I finally finished Rick and Morty the last season. Um, great show. I'm kind of annoyed with how overrated it's become now because people pull, hang on to like the most random shit from this show and then make it seem like it's so integral to the story like Pickle Rick or Szechuan Sauce and it's like alright those were entertaining but you know whatever and they become memes um, but I get it you know random shit random little morsels um you know, it's interesting how Rick and Morty is very episodic, but at the same time they have uh, recurring themes and a, a, a continuity as well. What's like Doctor Who? Uh, I think they do a good job with that. But I think people give it more credit than it deserves for being a very smart uh, show. I think sometimes, uh, you know, Rick's just a dick because he's a dick and there's no real driving force behind it. <laughs> like sometimes they just do shit because it's, it's, it seems funny on paper I just want to push the envelope so sometimes sometimes I do feel like and I love this show don't get me wrong but sometimes I feel like with Rick and Morty they're just trying to you know be obscene for the sake of being obscene that's, that's the best way I can describe it anyway let's uh, wrap up with some uh, obligatory news and rants um, and I wanted to say, you know, I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone. I'm doing the, um, they just released the Treasure at the Catacombs, uh, thing. That was really neat. I like the way they did that. Um, and, uh, the, the Tavern Brawls have been pretty cool as well. But now they have these um, card packs you get that won't be available till the next expansion. So they're, like, they're gift wrapped. That's pretty neat. Um, I went back and I'm still and I'm going back and, and trying to finish the Frozen Throne expansion, uh, solo adventure rather. And um, for that last battle, if you beat him with all the classes, you get the Frostmourn. They'll tell you that, but I know that's what that's what it is because it has someone use it on me before, and it's pretty, pretty awesome. But what it does is it summons all minions that died, and I think you become immune when you attack with it. It's it's pretty freaking broken. It's just uh, it's 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 a finisher without a doubt, much like the Deathwing. Um. But the thing here, here's the thing about it. This is really clever the way they did this. Every class has a different strategy because the Lich King 
adapts to each class. For example, with the if you play as Hunter, for every minion you have in your deck, he'll do two damage to you. So if you have a lot of minions, he can kill you with one attack. Uh, and uh, he only can do that when he gets the spell in his hand, but, you know, if you have, you know, 10 minions, that's 20 damage right off the bat. <laughs> so that's pretty painful. So you have to... I think I did finally beat... Yeah, I did, I did end up beating him with the Hunter. I beat him, and I'm losing track now. I beat him with the rogue twice actually because I thought I didn't beat him with her. And with her, if you have any spells, he does damage to you. So I, I put no. Actually, he gets rid of all your spells from your from your deck. So I, I had to do an all minions deck. So none of the rogue tricks that are kind of staples to rogue decks. But it worked. I, I built a pretty nice wild deck. You definitely should look at wild deck and not standard decks. You're probably not going to beat any of these scenarios out of wild deck. Uh, Kel'Thuzad is a good addition to a lot of these. With Warlock, he um, reduces all the creatures to... No, no, no. That's sh Shaman. With Shaman, he reduces all the creatures to 1-1. One, one. So I find a good way to work around that. So I'll probably talk about that next time. Um, hopefully we'll have Beard and Hannah in the show. I know he plays Hearthstone as well. But um, I got four more classes to beat him with. And now I get the Frostborn. Woohoo! All right, machine gun through this. Uh, I think we mentioned it before, but Disney's uh, looking to buy parts of 20th Century Fox, which would mean the Marvel will get X Men, Deadpool, and Fantastic Four back. Um, but they probably don't want the last one because that's been tainted quite a bit. Um, Xbox Live games with gold has been fantastic. Uh, actually, it's about to reset soon. Uh, Touring Test is on there. Nights to Dreams. Trackmania. Uh, not too long ago, they had uh, Gianna's sister, Twisted Dreams. And I think they got some other new stuff on there. But um, really strong games. Um, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins is out. People are actually digging it. Apparently, there's a crafting system and there's loot boxes, which everyone's doing. Um, IGN did this big video on the evolution of Assassin's Creed. You know, good looking games, and if I, you know, going from game to game, I'm like, ah, oh, it's not a huge jump from game to game. There's just been too many Assassin's Creeds, and I think it, I, for me, it's still too soon. I, I've kind of, I'm burnt down on it. Maybe uh, two or three years from now, I, I'll have, a, I'll sing a different tune. Um, I don't know, but you know, the whole origins thing, does going back further in history, further than uh, Altair, um. It's interesting. It also tells me that it, they probably don't know where to take the story next <laughs> with the whole thing with Desmond and uh, the things going, the stuff going on in the modern world uh, in the present day, so to speak. Um, I may have mentioned this before, but IGN bought Humble Bundle, and uh, that was kind of uh, snuck in there. <laughs> I was like, damn. Uh, not a fan of that move. Because uh, I notice now the humble bundles are not as great as they used to be. It's going to be very... I feel like it's going to cater more towards their their partners, their advertising partners. It's going to become a self-serving thing. So, here we go. More big fish eating little fish. Uh, so that's good, though. One less thing for me to check regularly. Because humble could be a, a a sickness, and I, I'm still tempted to get the monthly bundle though, because that that is fun. You know, is it twelve dollars a month? This is a really good proposition. And that right now they got this this thing where you can get like five hundred dollars worth of Java books and a Minecraft forging guide from O'Reilly on you know, the animal books for. 15 bucks or more. That's crazy. I'm still bitter about EA shutting down Visceral Games. And, uh... Turns out, you know, there's a lot of... You know, the, 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 there's a lot more to the story. I haven't looked fully into it because it upsets me. I mean, Dead Space, come on. Um, but apparently they had Visceral working on some other projects. And, you know, kind of as a mid-tier, I don't know, developer. 
um, not working on their flagship properties. And I don't know. Uh, you know, they have all these projects in the pipeline. Like they, they had the Star Wars project, uh, a couple of them, from what I understand. And those got shut down. And EA just has a bad habit of setting unrealistic timelines or ha setting um, financial targets. So, you know, they can make 1.5 billion in sales off a game, but they're like, oh, we projected 2.5, so that's a failure. <laughs> and actually, the margins a lot of times are smaller than that, and they're still not happy, you know. Oh, we expect to make uh, 10 million in profit here, but we only made 9 million. Oh, that's a failure. And then they just start shutting shit down. I don't know. They They're just... I feel like EA's where great studios go to die. It sucks. There needs to there needs to be what I would like to see is a union for developers of something of sorts where we where we could bring back the mid tier developers, right? So not just the triple A studios and the indies, something in the middle where they could self, where they just unionize, form an alliance even, you know, an association, and keep jobs circulating between themselves. I mean, it's kind of already happening, but have a formal system in place. So between these smaller fish that are not super tiny, but big enough to be noteworthy, they could amass the resources they need, you know, under one banner. So ha they'll have additional banner rec um, brand recognition. Something like that needs to happen. Because yeah, then you, here's another story. Runic um, released uh, Hob. These are the folks that uh, that made um, the uh, Torchlight games. Fantastic. And a bunch of other stuff that I can't think of right this moment. But Hob um, was v critically acclaimed the moment it was released. Uh, our friends over at the B-Team podcast got our early access to it and they said it's fantastic it's it's zelda you know but not zelda you know kind of a metroidvania vibe as well um everything they said about it sounded fantastic i didn't even get a chance to look at it yet myself i think it's only on pc currently but uh that studio's been shut down uh you have things like te Telltale Games, who's downsizing. They they reduced their workforce by twenty five percent, ninety people. Um, and then you have conversations like, "Oh, is the arcade, is the arcade experience dead?" I think we we'll have to revisit that. That's a great conversation to have when we have our hosts back from their uh, extended breaks, because uh, life happens. You got busy adulting. So, you know, all this stuff. You look at all these things. You're like, damn. You know, the. Is this gaming industry crash happening? It really feels like that's where we're heading. Um, a lot of bad business decisions, self serving stuff. I, I get it, you know, it's a business, it needs to be profitable. But if they don't look at the big picture, what's going to end up happening is the, the bottom's going to fall out, out of the entire industry. Can you imagine how insufferable EA would be and Activision would be if all their competition died off? They would just turn, they would play it even more safe than they already do. It'd be freaking a world full of battlefields and Call of Duties and a bunch of sports games. Ugh. Ugh. It, can you imagine? I, I, don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know. Um, what else we got here in the news? Xbox Live game gifting is now live for everyone. You'll even see it, uh, it works through the website as well, so that's really cool. Um, long time coming. <laughs> and Rainbow Six Siege, year three. You know, Rainbow Six Siege, one of my favorite games of the past 10 years, hands down. Top, top 10 at the very least. Um, love this game. More people should play it. Um, but year three is going to feature 
uh, the first ever co-op mode for the game. Which again, I don't understand why the situation and some of the other stuff isn't co-op. It, it technically is co-op in there already with Terrorist Hunt. But it's saying this is going to be the first ever co-op mode, okay. Because Terrorist Hunt, if you ask me, is co-op, but whatever. I guess they mean scenario co-op. And people are saying it's going to be a zombie mode, because the mode is called Outbreak. It's going to launch with a four-week promotion where you can unlock exclusive cosmetic items. And they haven't set a firm release date, but we should expect it probably sometime after the next Invitational, next eSports event, uh, the 2018 6 Invitational, which is running, I believe, from February 13th to the 18th, 2018. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. To get back into that game, I haven't been doing, doing much games, period. And I guess uh, we should wrap things up with some uh, Black Friday deals and personal pickups. I picked up uh, Sonic Forces Bonus Edition, which comes with a skin for your Xbox One controller. I was hoping it would come with some figurines, but you know, 29 bucks. I'm not gonna get too picky. Um, and I got that on Amazon. Uh, Amazon. Amazon didn't have too much in the video games. A lot of the stuff they had was smart watches, robot maids, and fitness crap. That's the best way I could sum it up. Uh, I guess it's Amazon. It's like Amazon's where you go when you have a lot of money to burn and you're not really looking for anything specific. Because a lot of times for me, my interests, there's very little of, the, of what I want on sale. Um... We did have a pretty cool GP, a Garmin GPS running watch, though. That was pretty neat. Um, but, guys, some of those other watches are expensive as hell. I'm like, nah, I just can't justify that. Knowing me, I'd, 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 I'd like, swing my arm and slam it into something and crack it. Uh, some of the other games they had of, in, uh, of interest on there, Pillars of Eternity. Uh, mixed reviews, but it looks very interesting. It looks like a good take on uh, the Diablo... Van, Adventures of ha Van Helsing, Torchlight type of gameplay. Elex, uh, not a big sale on this. Uh, oh, by the way, Pillars of Eternity is 30 bucks. Uh, Elex is like $6 off retail price. Uh, this is by Nordic THQ, if I'm not mistaken. Really dig it, but this looks pretty interesting. It's like a cyberpunk type of uh, game. Um, um, it's... It, I read the description, it says something about customizing and branching storylines and gear, and I'm like, ooh, is there loot drops and stuff? And it just looked really neat. Um, but not at that price. <laughs> WWE 2K18 is $29.99. Divine's Divinity Original Sin Enhanced Edition. These are all Xbox One versions, by the way. $28.99. Black Guards 2, another interesting game. Turn-based uh, strategy game. $37.79. That looks really, really promising. Project Cars 2, I didn't know they had a sequel, but I'm kind of curious. $25. Disneyland Adventures for the kids. $19.99. I'm, I'm really tempted to pick that up. Um, I might pick it up tomorrow because uh, they're doing Black Friday deals all week. I don't know. All, they say Black Friday week. Did I start on Thursday or Friday? And when does it end? And I can't find that information. I'm like, I don't feel like digging for that. I'm sure. If, if anyone knows, feel free to tweet me at YogiZilla or at Geeky Antics. Let us all know. Um, I'd be curious to know. Or message me on Xbox. Uh, Xbox Live. YogiZilla. Uh, Xbox One S, 500 gigabyte console. This is a discontinued um, model. Battle. It was the Battlefield 1 bundle, 230 flat. And I'm sure there's tax too. Xbox One wired controller, 2299 That's just 7 bucks up. But, you know, that's something. And that's Amazon. Target had a whole slew of deals, um, but a lot of the stuff was sold out. I'll just go through some of the stuff they had on there, not the prices. They had a lot of stuff for the Lego Dimensions, which I really, really, really want to get into, but I'm so scared because, you know, they have the Doctor Who stuff. They have the Harry Potter stuff. They had Batman. Um, they had, like, the starter kit for, like, 30 bucks, which is usually 80 bucks. And then they have all these, like, uh, 
these um ah oh, fuck what do you call them the story packs to like keep building upon it it's just I, I, you know it's, it's it's no surprise that Lego Dimension is still going but I'm surprised that uh, Skyline is still going strong too they keep coming out with new series all, all the time but I'm surprised Disney, Disney Infinity did not stick I mean they have Marvel Star Wars and all the like you know the other Disney characters I mean jeez that's a massive universe, but it is. You know, I don't know why they bought out of that. They had they had to be making money. I mean, you you collect little trinkets and then play with them in a video game. It's the perfect combo. And they have rare figures you can get. By the way, the Lego the Lego Dimensions uh, that looks like it has some real legs. Cause you get to build your figures and your, your little vehicles and stuff, and then you get to put them on this little play mat, and they and they picks it up through. The RFID or whatever it has in there, and it ports it into your game. That's fucking dope. Um, so what else? Uh, the Target has a, a bunch of games. They probably have the best prices if you're willing to go physical, which I, I I'm fine with that. Um, because usually with the digital, you're spending five to ten dollars more easily. Uh, Dark Souls three, twenty bucks. Actually, I'm not gonna go through all the prices they have. Rainbow Six Siege Year Two Gold Edition. I, that I didn't need to sell a price. That that's sixty bucks, but it's the Gold Edition that has everything in it from Year Two. That's a good deal. Uh, Rainbow Six, Six uh, Siege Standard is fifteen bucks. They have Overwatch, Overcooked Gourmet Edition, Destiny Two, Disney Adventure. And I'm just mentioning the ones that have significant um, reductions. South Park: The Fractured Butthole, uh, Bioshock Collection. Uh, Madden 18, Rocket League Collector's Edition, Friday the 13th, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, GTA 5, uh, one of the best prices I found, 25 bucks. Resident Evil 7, Biohazard, very tempting. I really want to get that, but I'm like, am I going to get around to that? I don't know. It's just going to sit in shrink wrap until I finally do. Dead by Daylight, Titanfall 2, Halo Wars 2. This is a great deal. 15 bucks, but they were sold out. But I'm glad that I had a good response. Um, they were sold out locally and online for me. Uh, Fallout 4, 15 bucks. That still was available. And I still haven't gotten that game. I might, I might, I might pull the trigger. I do love Fallout. It's just I don't know if I can handle that, that undertaking now. Uh, I'm, I'm sure by the time I'm ready to play it, it'll be even lower. Um, Naruto Shippuden, Ultimate Ninja Storm 4, Road to Baruto, and Standard. Uh, those are on sale. The Inside Limbo combo. Doom. If you don't have it now, get it. 15 bucks. They had a lot of shit on sale. Oh, King's Quest, the Complete Edition uh, Collection. A lot of freaking good games. A lot more than Amazon had. Amazon really let me down. They might have something better on Cyber Monday. We'll see. So if you don't want something that badly, and the price is not just right where you want them, then hold out. You might find something better. On uh, Xbox Live, deals with gold and Microsoft Store, which you have uh, four days left uh, on this particular promotion. Evil Within 2. 30 bucks, Stardew Valley, 15 bucks. I did pick that up. Um, Shadow of War, all the additions are 40% up or up to 40% off. Injustice 2, all additions up to 60% off. That's also tempting. Ruiner, 33% off. That, that looks a lot like Postal. I haven't heard much about this game, but it looks pretty interesting. Beyond Eyes, this is the game we saw on E3 a couple years back, very artsy-fartsy. This is a girl tugging her heartstrings about a blind girl and how she perceives the world. Um, I'm curious. Uh, Prey, 20 bucks, I did get that. Actually, for some reason, I have problems processing that game. That, that one of my transactions didn't go through. That's one thing I don't like about buying stuff through the Xbox Live interface, is that um, it doesn't... Let you add things to carts, so you have to buy each thing individually. It's kind of stupid. Uh, GTA 5, starting at 30 bucks. But it, if you're going to get it and you haven't bought it yet, you know, it is worth it getting the White Whale or the Megalodon bundle. 
Because if you look at that, how much the, those cash cards in game cost, the Megalodon, which is the highest level you can get, is like 7 million credits. And that costs like 99.99 regularly. By itself on sale right now, it's 89.99. But if you get the bundle, you get that, the game plus that, plus 64. I, I went the one, one um, notch under that. I couldn't justify dropping that much on a game that kind of pissed me off. But, you know, I finally just decided I'm going to go for it. Because one thing you got to give Rockstar, yeah, the servers suck. They have problems with online. They had a shitty launch on each platform. But they keep investing in their games, and they do not rush games out. They are the opposite of Ubisoft when it comes to, like, the quality control. Um, Rainbow Six Siege is a one-off. But, you know, they, they just put out a few games, and they'll delay it. If they feel like it's not ready. And, you know, even if it launches, it still might be a little funny. But they keep adding content. Like, the DLC for GTA V has been free. Because they realize, hey, you know, you know, this is a better model. We'll make the money through the in-game cash. So, they, they, they played it smart. People could complain about the, the microtransactions, but... You know, I think it's a pretty good model. They created a whole platform out of a single game with GTA Online. Um, pretty brilliant. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I'm downloading this right now. I bought that too, $24.99. Can't wait. I just love the combos in there. I love all the characters. Super stoked. I'm a fanboy when it comes to that. Um, and it's 1080p, 60 frames per second. Oh, I can't wait to just experience all the combos and the the booms and the lights and the colors are oh, excited uh it goes freak on wildlands uh deluxe edition 35 bucks gold edition 50 bucks the standard is like 30 bucks it's like why let's get the deluxe edition or maybe it's less than that maybe it's 20 but still deluxe gives you the weapon skins um and some other goodies uh, i think it helps gives you an experience booster um, and then gold gives you all the DLC and all that stuff. I didn't pull the trigger on this, and I love Ghost Recon, but I'm like, all right, this is already I've already added to my wall of shame as it is. I even got you know Sonic Forces because I always talk about how I'm a big Disney fan, and I haven't been buying not Disney Sega fan, and I haven't been buying a lot of Sega games lately. And I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna do this just based on principle because I've heard good things about it. And you know what, I gotta keep Sonic going. Fuck you, Mario. You get too much, too much love. Sonic is dope too, and I like the Sonic Adventure games. And this is—it looks just like the old Dreamcast games, but with updated graphics. So, pretty dope. Ugh. And I think, uh, I think we're actually done. And I got some gas coming. Uh, ooh, there we go. That was close. That one almost came up with a little throw up. You never get that. I'm good. But folks, it's been great chatting with you. This is actually went longer than I expected. Uh, uh, catching up from the past few weeks of notes and um, just uh, going through my rants. You know, and then the whole time I didn't get to talk about Thanksgiving and all that stuff. And eh, I guess it worked out better because uh, you know. I was probably going to go into some sappy stuff about how I appreciate all of you. And I do. But uh, I never want us to feel scripted or forced. Um, but I hope that everyone is enjoying the holidays. And you're safe. You, the yours and yours are... The you and yours are safe. And enjoying quality time together. You know, don't take those little moments for granted. Um, that's an important thing. And uh, that's kind of why I'm not gaming as much now, because I'm trying to find that, that balance between, you know, working a lot and uh, making time for my family. And, of course, you know, the holidays are busy because you're making sure, oh, did, did I get everyone that is likely going to get me a gift one? It's embarrassing if someone gives you a gift and you're like, I got nothing for you. I wasn't thinking about you. <laughs> yep, that's awkward. Gifting is an awkward thing sometimes. I prefer random gifting rather than, what do you want? Okay, I'll get that for you. Like, what's the point? I can just get it myself. I don't know. 
I like the surprise of it, you know. Uh, and my job is doing the Toys for Top thing, so I definitely want to contribute to that. Cause it's sad when you see those those buckets empty. It's like, come on, people, you could go to a dollar store and buy some some cheap toys and put them in there, you know, something. Ah, what else? What else? All I got, folks, if you want to connect with me, I'm Yogizilla everywhere, mainly these days on Twitter, at Yogizilla, and I spot live, Yogizilla. Uh, if you want to email us, mail at geekyanswers.net, if you want to leave us voicemail or text, 646-801-2149. Of course, the Discord server is over at geekyanswers.net, forward slash Discord. And I'm Yogizilla, a.k.a. Yomar, and it's been great talking with you tonight. We'll see you next week. Peace. I'm <laughs> sorry.